This is a block of wool. These are several blocks of wool. These are several blocks of wool in different colors. You should always do your redstone with these blocks. If you use any other blocks, you're doing it wrong. Terracotta is the only other acceptable resource. If you plan on making piston doors, please, for the love of god, use quartz. Iron is ugly, quartz is good. We should start learning things. Ticks. No, not those. I mean redstone ticks. The basic concept of timing redstone in Minecraft. In perfect world conditions, there are 10 redstone ticks per second, or 1 every 0.1 second. Redstone dust is a mineral that can transmit redstone power when placed as a block, at least that's what the wiki told me. You can power this redstone dust with any component that produces a redstone signal, like a lever or the things shown in great detail on the screen right now. Hope you saw that. Redstone dust can travel 15 blocks before it loses signal. And now, we need help from a friend. Repeaters can take any redstone signal and add another 15 signal strength to it. Only downside is they add 1 to 4 redstone ticks of delay based on where the torch is on the block, so they make more redstone stuff happen, but they take a little bit longer. They can also take a redstone signal from solid blocks. Redstone torches pretty much do the same thing, but are just inverted, and you cannot alter the delay from a single redstone tick. You can also lock a repeater into its current state by powering it from either the left or the right side with another repeater or a comparator, I'll get into those later. Now that you know how very basic redstone stuff works, you have a lot of power. No, I mean literally, you have a lot of power. You can power things like doors, fences, trapdoors, and pistons. Wait, what? Pistons? Pistons are redstone components that extend when powered by any redstone signal. They can push blocks in front of them and can do so for 12 blocks until they become lazy and dip. Sad. They also have cousins with gorilla glue on their heads, called sticky pistons, and get this, they're sticky. They can push and pull blocks in front of them, but can spit blocks in certain circumstances. Droppers eject items when powered that can go anywhere from a water stream to another dropper. Dispensers do the same thing except for special cases where they can interact with an item as a player would, like shooting an arrow or lighting a fire. Hoppers are blocks that can transport items to them. They can be locked to let said items stay in them, and they can also have a little bit of a prioritization order, where if items have the choice to go down or to any side, they'll always go down, unless the storage beneath them is full. You can use droppers and hoppers to make a lot of circuits, and the way they become much more OP is with... Comparators. These are redstone components that can read the amount of items filling any container, droppers and hoppers included. They output a signal strength accordingly. They can also read signals from other redstone dust and outputs the same signal that they read. But comparators are a little bit more complicated than that. They have side inputs. So by default, if the signal on the sides is greater than the signal from the back, it turns off completely. Right clicking or interacting with the comparator makes subtract mode happen that allows you to subtract the signals at the sides from the back. The output is the solution to the extremely complex mathematical equation. Observers are blocks that have two important sides, the eyes and the lips, waiting for a kiss. Mwah. The observer sends out a redstone signal when anything happens to disturb the face at the front. Rails powering, blocks moving, redstone dust itself powering, the observer itself moving, detecting the air block removal and adjustment, and a lot, a lot, a lot, lot, lot more.